we found the Higgs. Now, what else can we do with the LAC? Well, we can look for some new phenomenon. Everybody's just like, yeah, you found the Higgs, great. Shut it down. We build it to find the Higgs. We found the Higgs. $10 billion well spent. What is dark matter? What are all the unexplained patterns in the tables of the particles? Why is gravity so much weaker than the other forces? These questions we don't have any answer to. We have to keep looking for answers to these questions. We need to be looking for new stuff. Uh, we have a big mystery in particle physics, which is if you look at the fundamental forces, you have the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and you have gravity, right? Gravity, strangely, is really, really weak compared to everything else. Like, gravity is by far the weakest force there is. Imagine you have a magnet, right? You can pick up a nail with a, with a very small, weak magnet, right? That nail is being pulled down by the entire gravitational force of the Earth. But it's easily counteracted by the magnetic force of a very tiny, small magnet. So a very weak little magnet can outstrip the entire gravitational force of the Earth and nobody knows why. Now you might think, wait a second, gravity can't be that weak. It's actually the most important force because like, what controls the structure of solar systems and the universe and right? Why does the Earth go around the sun? Well, it's gravity. And so gravity is a very powerful force on huge scales. But that's just because on those scales, there is no electromagnetic force. It's not like there's an electromagnetic force between the sun and the Earth. But the sun is mostly balanced and the Earth is mostly balanced electrically. <laughs> if there's like positive charge on the Earth and negative charge on the Sun that was at all significant, <laughs> we would just get slurped up into the Sun. So nobody knows why gravity is so weak. But this idea of extra dimensions might explain it. This idea that there might be more dimensions to space than just three dimensions. And this is a really interesting topic because obviously when you just walk around the world you think there are three dimensions. It's obvious. There's up, there's, you know, there's left, and there's, and there's forward and backwards. Right, so X, Y, Z, three dimensions. How could there be more than three dimensions? Oh, well, we have no good reason for believing that there are just three, right? Why three? Because remember, a dimension is not like a place to go. Like in science fiction, popular science fiction, a journey to another dimension is like an alternate universe. But really, a dimension is just a, a direction in space. There's this common misuse of the word dimension. Somebody brought the two ideas together. They said, there's been bouncing around this idea of extra dimensions. What if that could solve this problem, which is the question of why gravity is weak? The way we typically think of it is there's the electromagnetic force and it goes as 1 over r squared and there's gravity which is down here and it also goes as 1 over r squared okay? and they're hugely different. This is different by 32 orders of magnitude, the one with a whole bunch of zeros after it. Okay, So that's the huge difference and so that's the puzzle. Why is this gravitational force so much weaker than this electromagnetic one? And the extra dimensional answer is well actually at small enough distances, they're actually the same. But because there's extra dimensions, gravity is actually getting diluted, as I say, with 1 over r to the fourth power law. So it's actually, at some sort of fundamental scale, it's actually the same strength as electromagnetism. But as you go to larger distances, it drops much faster than the electromagnetic one. So most of gravity's strength is disappearing into these little dimensions that we can't actually see. So this is a classic theorist game. People noticed, oh, we've measured here, we've measured here, we've measured here. Oh, we've never measured here. So I'm feel, I can feel free to invent any crazy theory I want because we don't know, right? And oh, actually, if it turns out this crazy theory is kind of elegant in this way and solves this problem, and, and then actually, people get excited. Yeah, and, actually, and then experimentalists start to think, but, well, maybe that's yeah, actually worth checking. More, right? We can also see evidence for extra dimensions at the LHC. Bottom line is extra dimensions predict new particles. It would be like you turn on the collider and you analyze the data and after some very laborious analysis you find that there's evidence for a particle that's just like the electron. It's got the same charge, has the same other quantum numbers, has the same spin. Everything's the same except it's got some heavier mass. All the particles exist in all the dimensions, right? But if you're moving in this other dimension... You don't see it actually making that motion. We don't see the energy or momentum in the extra dimension. We do see it because of E equals mc squared, we see that as mass in our system. So that's what we're looking for is normal matter but heavier versions of it. It's hidden except for the fact that you seem to be heavier. If your whole arm started moving in this other dimension, it would get basically it would get heavier. Yes. A lot heavier. So basically, instead of seeing a five-dimensional particle, we'd see a whole sequence of four-dimensional particles with different masses. It's called the Kaluza-Klein Tower. 
-hmm. And then you'd be discovering a copy of the electron and maybe a copy of some quarks and a copy of the photon. And then the real smoking gun would be if you saw the second layer too. And you would see, you know, another particle that's also got all the same properties as the electron except it's even heavier than the first new particle. So you see this ladder, this ladder or this tower of particles, of new particles that all have these equal spacing, and that suggests that, that these are actually particles going through these uh, extra dimensions. There's a whole other way to test gravity at colliders, which is if you have these scenarios where the weakness of gravity is explained by these extra dimensions, if you can get particles close enough together, you would be able to experience strong gravity. And so another thing that could happen at the LHC is that you could collide two particles and if they get close enough, what this would manifest itself as is the creation of a little black hole. This black hole is not like any normal black hole. Well, no, no, no black holes are really normal, but <laughs> it is not like an astrophysical black hole, like the ones that we think of at the center of the galaxy. These are tiny little guys and we know because of Hawking's work that tiny little black holes evaporate very fast, unlike big astronomical black holes. So we wouldn't really be able to see the black hole, but what we would see is this creation, which is an indirect evidence of creation of this tiny little black hole, which would then evaporate, spraying particles all over your collider. And so that's another way to look for um, strong gravity or these extra dimensions. So it's important to know that there is no such thing as the theory of extra dimensions. There's a huge variety of extra-dimensional theories. You can have one extra dimension, two extra dimensions, almost any number of extra dimensions. And they can be different sizes. They can be big or small. They all have their own predictions. Not all the particles we know about have to move in all the extra dimensions. And this is why there have been so many papers written on this in, in recent years. Do any of these things have to do with reality? We, we don't know. The LHC's been on roughly maybe two years. We, the particle physicists, have been thinking of the LHC as a several decade program, you know. And it's not just because, well, we don't have anything else to do. It's, there's more and more <laughs> data coming, and it's very important. Although the Higgs came out early, actually it's surprisingly early to many people, I think, even to some particle physicists, that doesn't mean that if it didn't show up yet, it's not there, you know. We've got a long road ahead of potentially extremely interesting research to do. In my, people's minds, the LHC is either going to destroy the world via black hole, or discover the Higgs boson. In my mind, the main purpose of the LHC was explore, look for new crazy stuff we haven't seen before. Like if we found uh, extra dimensions, we'd be like, wow, extra dimensions. Why are there extra dimensions this size? Are there more extra dimensions? Like, there'd be so many follow-up questions to ask, right? It would inform so many other questions if you just have one surprising discovery.